In the last tutorial where we covered how to make a basic drawing software, we have used the if-else statement to divide the canvas into top, down, left, and right. What if I want to specify a more specific region of a canvas? Without further ado, we're just going to jump straight into the P5 sketch. And I'm going to illustrate the problem first. Um, so I'm going to play the sketch. And let's imagine this sketch in four halves right now. So there's an upper left, upper right, lower left, lower right. And I want to create a hovering effect so that when my cursor is hovered over the upper left hand side of my canvas, um, maybe a, a square on the upper left would turn to a different color. So, so let's try that. Um, first, I'm going to draw a rectangle so that I can actually see it in concrete terms. So I'm going to say 0, 0. And um, the width and height is going to, I'm actually going to create a variable here. So I'm going to say um, let width equals 200, let height equals 200. So this is going to be width and height. So I'm going to hit play. And um, the goal here is when I hover my mouse over the white square, the square would turn to a different color. So if I apply what we have already learned so far and try to add a if statement, I would say if mouse x um, is smaller than width divided by 2, then the fill is going to change color. Um, let's say I want it to be a cyan color. So 2550, 255. Oh, actually it's 0255255. Okay, so I'm gonna hit play. <laughs> Um, and also I have to write my else statement, right? Because otherwise it turns cyan and it doesn't ever have a way of going back. So I'm going to say else is going to be, um, I'm just going to say it's going to be the same color as the background. So, so at the moment, whenever my cursor is on the left hand side of the canvas, um, the square turns cyan. When it's on the right hand side, it becomes gray again. But here I face an issue, which is um, when my cursor is at the bottom of the canvas and when I'm going to the left hand side, even though my cursor is not on top of my square, it still turns cyan. And, and that's because so far we only have a way to, to describe the left side of the canvas. We need to find an additional way to say, Oh, not only just the left side of the canvas, but also the top portion of the canvas um, needs to be taken into account. So, so this is actually where um, something called the logical operator comes in really handy. So um, with a logical operator, you can actually add multiple Boolean expressions into your if statements. Um, so the first one we're seeing here is something called and um, I'm going to return and, and use it right away. So what it does is essentially adding a different Boolean expression into your if statement. So, so here I can say um, if mouse x is smaller than width divided by 2 and um, mouse y is smaller than height divided by 2. If both of these conditions satisfy, then the square would turn cyan. So I hope that makes sense. Let's actually try to implement the three other corners. Um, so here I'm going to put my else um, portion to the bottom. So actually this is where the else if comes into play, right? So I can say if 
you know, it's on the upper left corner, it's going to be cyan. Else if, and don't forget opening curly bracket and closing ones. Um, else if, let's say, let's, let's go to the upper right of the region, right? Else if mouse x is bigger than width divided by 2 and mouse y is smaller than height divided by 2 then I'm going to actually just make a CMYK color scheme here so I'm going to say 255-0255 and I'm gonna hit play here um, actually just um, realizing that I need to draw another rectangle here so so what I'm going to do actually is moving my rectangle into my conditional statement okay let's hit play here so that only that very rectangle on the upper left gets affected by um, the, the cyan fail when my cursor enters that upper left region okay so now i am going to draw another rectangle here and it's going to be um the, the starting x position is going to actually be the width of the rectangle since it's at the perfect center um and zero width height so i'm gonna hit play there <laughs> And there you go. It's like when I move my cursor hover over that, it's going to show the other square. So I can actually just keep going with this and I'm going to keep saying uh, here, else if, so now I have to think about the bottom left, um, else if mouse x is actually smaller than width divided by 2 and mouse y is smaller than height or actually greater than greater than height divided by two then again i'm going to actually copy this first two line over here put it here and it's going to be um cmy so i'm going to use a yellow color And the height is going to be H. All right. And the last one is else if mouse X bigger than width divided by two and mouse Y bigger than height divided by two. And there again, the field is actually going to be black and the rectangle um, x position y position with height okay so so here we have um, four different regions all completely covered by this different sets of if and elf, else if statements um, since in this case, in this program, like every single portion of the canvas has been covered um, through the statements. We actually do not need the last else portion of the statement. So actually what we have covered so far bring us towards a topic of coding a button in P5JS. So here I am actually going to start a new sketch and the task here is to figure out how we can place a square in the center of the canvas and be able to hover over it and have it change color. So I'm going to here say um, rectangle and it's going to be width divided by two and height divided by two and it's going to be 100 by 100. And when I hit play, um, the rectangle is going to be slightly offset. So another thing, another feature that is handy in P5JS is something called the rect mode. And when you use the rect mode, you can define whether 
um, the mode of your rectangle is going to be at the center or at the corner. So here, if I uh, click play again, you can see that I have changed my anchor point for my rectangle and now it's in the center. And now we're gonna figure out how, how we can possibly um, create a set of conditionals so that when the cursor hover over, it's going to change color. So I'm going to start one by one and tackle all different sides, similar to what we did with the four corners. So I'm going to start with an if statement, if mouse x is um, bigger than, or actually smaller than, um, what we want to describe is the very left hand side of that square. Um, and the way we can describe this is we can say that it is at width divided by two um, minus like the rectangle width divided by two. So here it would be very useful actually for us to create a variable for the rectangle. So I'm going to say that the width of the rectangle and the height of the rectangle are both going to be a hundred. And here I'm going to change it, change it into rect width and rect height. So over here, I can then conveniently say um, rect width divided by two, right? So if mouse x is um, smaller than like the center point divided by the half of the rectangle, then we're, we're landing exactly on that line of the left side. So actually it needs to be bigger, right? So if mouse x is over that line, then the feel for the rectangle is going to be 255, 255, 0. So if I hit play now, we can try to test this. Uh, when my cursor passes that line, <laughs> um, the, the rectangle changes. Well, of course, I can keep going with my cursor and it doesn't deactivate it. If I move up, it doesn't deactivate it. If I move down, it still stays yellow. So, so actually, what we need to do first is go to else. And so say um, fill is going to be black. So now we have two different sets of condition, right? So basically over this line and before this line, over this line and before this line. Um, okay, so, so now we need to work on the other sides of this rectangle. So, so here um, what I can do to add additional conditions um, to this statement is by using the and logical operator. And so here I can say mouse y um, needs to be bigger, needs to go over um, height divided by two minus um, rect height divided by two. So if I hit play there, I can see that now when I go above the rectangle, it's gonna, it's not gonna turn yellow, but when I cross that line, it turns yellow again. However, this side and this side still needs to be covered, right? So we can actually continue to build on um, this statement over here and we can say, um, let's go to the right side, say if mouse x is smaller than width divided by two plus rectangle width divided by two and mouse y smaller than height divided by two plus rect height divided by two. So, so by turning the center into a hovering zone, you can essentially replace the square with anything you like. So to give a very simple example, I can add a piece of text. And maybe in text, I will say, hello. And I'm going to place that piece of text in the center of the canvas. And 
I'm going to take off my rectangle for now. It's quite small. So let me change the text size to 48. And also I want the text to align to the center of the canvas. So I'm going to say text align center. All right. So, so now we have um, this simple piece of string and it's going to take on the same effect, right? So, so because text also has a feel property, um, when I hover over this region um, that I have predefined using the help of a rectangle, I can actually affect different kinds of drawing elements. So, so this is something that you might use a lot as you're working with different kinds of challenges in P5. Um, oftentimes you have to set a rectangular region on the canvas in order to affect different kinds of elements.